Now, why did we do that? Because our goal in the end is for G to be solvable, right? So since we want G to be solvable, we need to, we need to start building some subgroups of G, right? What we're given is some knowledge about subgroups of N and subgroups of the quotient. But we need to know about subgroups of G that are bigger than N. And that's, that's what we do out of the quotient, right? So subgroups of the quotient tell us about subgroups of G bigger than N. So that's what we did there. And then over here, we just like essentially glue the two series together. Because now that we've got subgroups of the group, not just the quotient, then not only do we have subgroups of them, but they go in this like list, right? And we know normality because that's part of the correspondence theorem as well. I could say normal subgroups about the quotient group. And then we, now that we've got all those, we can just well, first of all, form the series of them, but uh, like importantly, just like glue them all together. Then, I don't know, what's the last step? I guess the last step is to um, <clears throat> check the new part satisfies the right condition. Right, is that a, is that a good like overview? I like that you ask that because I often don't think about this stuff, but I should. This would be a good problem for the test. I, I'll make like a list again, right? But this is like a technique, right? This is like an advanced-ish group theory technique. 